Hi. Now what we've got here is an example where we've got to work backwards on the normal distribution. Example that you might like to try if you haven't tried it already. Just pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll run through the work solution. Okay, let's see how you got on. Well, what we've got here then, just to recap from earlier, is that the heights of an adult female population are normally distributed with a mean of 162 centimetres and standard deviation 7.5 centimetres. Now we're told that Sarah is a young girl, she visits her doctor and is told that she is at the 60th percentile for her height. And assuming that Sarah remains at the 60th percentile, what we've got to do is estimate her height as an adult. Now what we need to do is to define the random variable xa. And I'm going to define it as being let x be the random variable, height in centimetres where x is distributed normally with a mean of 162 and a variance of 7.5 squared. So we need to sketch some diagrams here as well. So if we do the diagrams in the usual way, we've got the normal distribution for our random variable x centered with a mean of 162 and directly beneath this we've got our standardized normal distribution z with a mean of zero. So we're looking for where this 60th percentile is going to be. Well, what this means is that there's a probability of 60% of being less than a particular height. So that particular height has got to be over this side to the right of 162 then because obviously to the left of 162 that's 50%. So if we've got to be less than 60% I'll just say that it's there. Okay, We'll call this the observed value x. So that means that this area to the left here is going to represent 60% or as a decimal 0.6. That also means that obviously this area to the right here, we'll mark that in in say green, the area to the right of our observed value x has got to be 0.4. Now what we do is we project this observed value straight the way down onto our standardized normal graph and we'll call this z. Now we need to know what this value of z is. z is always worked out as being the observed value x minus the mean mu all divided by the standard deviation sigma. Now what we know at this stage, okay, let's just draw a line down here. What we know at this stage is that the probability of z being less than the little z here that I've got here has got to equal 0.6. I haven't shaded that in but we'll shade that in now. That is that this area 2 must be the same as the one above must be 0.6. And it means that the one to the right here just like above of this z value that must be 0.4. So the probability of being less than this value of z is still going to be 0.6. Or you could say the probability of being more than this z value, okay? Same thing, basically, being more than z has got to equal 0.4. So where is this going? Well, if we know this transformation, if we can work out what z is, we know what mu is, we know what sigma is, we can work out what x is. And we can work out z from tables. And you've got a choice of two sets of tables for this particular question. And I've got extracts of them. First of all, the preferred set of tables is what we call the inverse normal tables. And in your book you should have something along these kind of lines. The tables that I've got give the probability of being more than a z value is equal to p as you can see in this diagram here. So using these tables is going to be a bit pointless for something like this.
So that's why I've gone for the probability of Z being greater than Z is equaling 0.4. So that means our p-value is 0.4 and you can see from these tables here if I look at p being 0.4 we've got this corresponding Z value 0.2533. So I can say then that from tables, okay, that if I'm using these tables, Z equals 0.2533. And I can substitute this value into this equation. So therefore, we've got 0.2533 for Z equals the observed value, which we're trying to find here, call it X minus the mean which is 162 all divided by the standard deviation which is 7.5 we've got up here or we put the variance as 7.5 squared so standard deviation is 7.5 so it's just a question of rearranging this to get x all I've got to do is multiply both sides by 7.5 that will give me 7.5 multiplied by 0.2533 and then add the 162 and if you work that out you'll find you get 163.899 and so on and if we round this say to one decimal place that's going to be 163.9 and the units would be centimeters to one decimal place on dp Having a sketch also gives us a, an advantage because we can check to see that our observed value, we're expecting to see that it's more than 162. So you can see this value has come out at more than 162. Now it's not the only set of tables that you could use to do this problem. You could use the normal set of tables which give the probability of being less than a given value of Z, as in this diagram here, this area to the left of Z. And if that were the case, we've got here the probability of being less than this value of Z is 0.6. But what you have to do, the disadvantage with these tables is quite often you don't have the exact value in you have to look down this column and this is as I say is an extract from a set of tables and in the tables I was looking at you can see that to get close to 0 0.6 is this value here 0 0.5987 okay it's just 13 units if you like from 87 to make that up to 60 as opposed to this one which is 26 units above 0.60 so it's much closer this one so that means that Z is 0.25 and you can see how it compares with this value of Z 0.2533 now you can use either one of these it doesn't really matter as long as you show you're working generally they should be able to tell what you're doing so there you go that's how you can use either one of these sets of tables and how you work backwards then do it using the inverse method.